Okay, now that uh, it's a little bit after six o'clock, we're gonna begin this public hearing. This public hearing is for Centro's proposed service changes for its commuter service connecting Auburn and the city of Syracuse. Now this public hearing is beginning at 6.03. It's scheduled for 6 p.m. Uh, the agenda for tonight, we're gonna to go through a quick uh, presentation of the service changes. If, uh, if any time you'd like to submit comments during the presentation, please use the question feature that's in the meeting control panel to the right-hand side of your screen. We ask that you limit the questions to the proposed service changes only. Um, responses to <laughs> or questions will be addressed at the conclusion of the presentation as appropriate. I would ask everybody who is not speaking, please to uh, mute your, uh, your uh, microphone, please, until the end of the presentation. At this point, I would like to introduce uh, the Centro individuals who are here listening to the public comment. That would include our Centro Chief Executive Officer, Brian Schultz, Centro's Deputy Chief Executive Officer, Christopher Tuff, Central Board Members Darlene Lattimore, representing Cayuga County, and Central Board Member Tina Fitzgerald, representing Onondaga County. My name is Steve Cagle. I'm the Vice President of Communications and Business Planning here at Central. So the service changes, essentially what we looked at, we looked at the commuter services that connected Syracuse and Auburn, and uh, looked at uh, ridership levels combined with the uh, COVID pandemic uh, elements and uh, determined that uh, we were trying to uh, consolidate some routes and discontinue some others that are underutilized uh, in a more efficient way of providing services that connect Auburn and, and Syracuse. Among them were to consolidate the Welch Allen Tessie Plastics Service with our Auburn to Syracuse service, the 138. We're also looking to enhance and modify uh, the existing uh, variations of the Auburn to Syracuse service. Uh, we were going to discontinue the Auburn to Syracuse via Weedsport, Jordan, and Elbridge route, and discontinue the uh, service that connects uh, Auburn with the Moravia and Kiwi Correctional Facility. We're gonna go through these uh, each of these routes changes uh, one by one. We'll be getting with the Welch Allen Tessie Plastics Service. Uh, this service uh, was weekday commuter uh, bus route and it connected uh, downtown Auburn to Tessie Plastics uh, in Elbridge and Welch Allen in Montville. We provided uh, two trips to these facilities uh, for first and second shift workers. In addition, we have three return trips to provide transportation for first, second, and third shift workers. Um, on average, there were approximately 13 riders who used this on a daily basis. These numbers, all the numbers I'm going to cite tonight are from uh, the calendar year 2019. These are pre-pandemic numbers. The bulk of the ridership that used this service uh, was traveling to and from the Welch Allen uh, plant. The Tessie Plastics ridership was very low. It averaged less than uh, one person uh, per trip. Uh, CNY uh, Centro staff met with individuals from Tessie Plastics and Welch Allen during 2019 and 2020 to assess uh, where they were and what their transportation needs were uh, for the future. Uh, Tessie Plastics, when that service began back in the mid-2000s, uh, we were providing about 20 to 30 rides per day. Uh, that, uh, that number uh, had dwindled down to about to less than two per day uh, as of uh, 2019. Uh, in having conversations with uh, their human resources department, they indicated that they had uh, changed the recruitment approach, no longer felt that public transportation was a high priority for the candidates that uh, they were seeking to employ. Uh, Welch Allen, uh, in conversations with Welch Allen, uh, ridership has maintained, uh, been very steady over the years. Uh, it maintained between 12 and 24 users per day uh, in 2019 and during the pandemic. Now, Welch Allen uh, leadership indicated to us that they needed workers during the pandemic. Um, they relied on the bus service and they were looking to expand their operations uh, in the post-pandemic um, 
world. Uh, and they were looking to expand uh, employment options for individuals who live in Syracuse and in Auburn. The existing service uh, prior had only provided service that was really usable for individuals who lived in the city of Auburn. Uh, so what uh, we are looking to do is consolidate the Welch Allen and Tessie Plastic route with, um, which will be the new 138 Auburn Syracuse route. Uh, it will leave Auburn. It will travel to Skinny Atlas as it always had, but it will travel up 321 and take uh, old Seneca Turnpike through to Marcellus. Uh, and then it would continue uh, through to um, the Taunton area, uh, Hollow Hill to Taunton and to the city of Syracuse. Um, uh, in this way, we would able, be able to provide uh, similar service to Welch Allen for those dozen or two uh, riders who are still using the service on a regular basis. This would preserve the Welch Allen service, access to Welch Allen from both Auburn and Syracuse. It would discontinue the service to Tessie Plastics, which is being uh, highly underutilized. And we'd be able to re reallocate those resources that had been dedicated to the Auburn Route 7 uh, bus route to uh, providing additional service uh, on the Syracuse uh, Auburn 138 bus route. The uh, Looking at the existing um, Auburn to Syracuse bus service that uh, was the 236 and 138, there were two different services that ran uh, during weekdays. The 236 route was uh, inner city service that connected the city of Auburn, went to downtown Syracuse and traveled uh, through Skinny Atlas and Marcellus and through Fairmount. Now there were four trips that operated from Auburn uh, and six trips that operated from Syracuse each weekday. Uh, there was three in each direction on both Saturdays and Sundays and we'll talk about the weekend uh, in a little bit. The, uh, the 138 route is a weekday commuter service which connects downtown Auburn to the city of Syracuse but that extended uh, it went directly just to the Syracuse University area uh, and did not travel uh, to the Central Transit Hub. It also traveled through Skinny Atlas, Marcellus, and Taunton. Now, there were six trips that operated from Auburn and four that operated from Syracuse uh, each, each weekday. And uh, this is what the service looked like beginning in Auburn. The old service is the dotted line that traveled this way through to Marcellus. The new service goes up 321 and to uh, Old Seneca Turnpike, traveling uh, through to Taunton and then to Syracuse. The old service would uh, went down Casson Road here and also to West Genesee Street. Uh, the portion of the route from uh, West Genesee Street from uh, Camille's Commons to downtown Syracuse is going to be performed from uh, buses that originate in the city of Syracuse. So the level of service along Genesee Street is not changed, however, Obviously, it's it's harder to get to that. Uh, there's not a direct route uh, during the weekday uh, from Auburn. So you would have to go to Syracuse and transfer to the Syracuse 36 route that brings you back out this way. Uh, the majority of the people riding the service were trying to get to Syracuse or downtown Syracuse uh, for employment purposes. That's why we um, made the change uh, to this particular route to keep it consistent. The 138 service, which had continued up to Syracuse University, um, we made the similar change from Auburn and made the change for Skinny Atlas and Marcellus again to provide service to Welch Allen. Uh, and we uh, are discontinuing uh, the service, or not discontinuing, we are ending the service at the Syracuse Transit Hub where people can make connections uh, that are quick and easy to the university area as well. So we're homogenizing those two into one uh, bus route that runs weekdays, that runs a little quicker, is more direct, um, more efficient for users and for the, the bus uh, for us to provide the service. So again, we're, we're trying to maintain consistent routing for the inner city uh, service between the city of Auburn and the city of Syracuse. We want to maintain our service to Welch Allen through that through the day. Um, the original 138 uh, bus route did bypass the transit hub. Um, this new service will allow people to not only get to the Syracuse University, but if they work or have to get to other parts of the central system within the city of Syracuse, we're now going to take them to the hub where they can make uh, they can make connections. Uh, again, it's more a more direct route and a shorter ride from Auburn to Syracuse. We think that's a little more attractive for users. There is a slight change in the call bus uh, coverage area in, in, uh, in Marcellus. Uh, this area here, because we are now going up 321 
and also through uh, old Seneca Turnpike. Uh, it does change the call bus coverage area. There were no call bus users uh, in this in this section of the the old section of this service. And when since we've been providing this service uh, since the pandemic. Uh, resume service after the pandemic, we have picked up two additional call bus riders. So it's actually been a, a better service for uh, call bus users in that part of the county. And uh, we are reallocating resources again from the Auburn 7 and Route 236 route. It's this way we can increase the number of trips between Auburn and Syracuse. We're uh, extending the day. We've added a late night trip that leaves Syracuse uh, at about 1025 for individuals who work in Syracuse and need to get back to the Auburn area later at night. Uh, that came, that was specifically from customer uh, requests for uh, later service coming to and from Syracuse. On the weekend, uh, the previous routing uh, would again go through the old, the old routing, routing connecting Skinny Atlas and Marcellus. We've changed that again to go up 321 and Old Seneca Turnpike to be consistent. Uh, although this time, when we get to the Howard Hill, uh, Casson Road area, the weekend service will go down Casson Road, will connect to Camillus Commons, and will terminate at Township 5. This allows us to have individuals or direct access to Township 5 for uh, shopping entertainment needs on the weekend, and also Camillus Commons. Customers can make, uh, they can make uh, transfers at Township 5 or at uh, Camillus Commons on our Route uh, 36 Syracuse route or the Syracuse 74 route. It will not continue to uh, down, down Genesee Street to the, to the Syracuse Transit Hub. Uh, people who need to get there can make connections at Camillus Commons or at uh, Township 5. Uh, that's essentially what, what this slide kind of uh, discusses. It's just the, the new routing is Syracuse Camillus Commons and Township 5. It matches the uh, the new Auburn 138 routing that we are operating during the week, and transfers are available uh, at Township 5, Camillus Commons, um, um, on the 74 and 36 routes. So, uh, so in essence, when you put it all together, we're looking to modify the Auburn existing Auburn 138 route to provide service to Welch Allen, uh, reroute the weekday uh, 236 Auburn Syracuse trips to follow the new routing that is consistent and take the the uh, the 236 service that previously had gone to downtown Syracuse and change that routing to provide service to Camillus Commons uh, and Township 5. The Route uh, 38 Auburn service that went through Elbridge that we are looking to discontinue. Uh, this was a commuter service that operated between the city of Auburn and city of Syracuse. There were two trips operated daily, um, one uh, from Syracuse uh, and one from uh, Auburn each day. Ridership was very low. It was five to six people per day that were using the service. Um, uh, so we're looking to you know, take those resources that are not on this bus route that's underutilized and uh, it helps us um, increase the service level on the Auburn and Syracuse 138 service. Um, it's, it provides the, you know, the, the new service again is more direct service um, and it's more frequent. Uh, of the five to six customers that use this route, um, I personally wrote it and observed, a couple of them were traveling from Auburn to Syracuse anyway, they just preferred this particular routing. I think because the timing of it was a little different, but we've matched times with this route, uh, this particular trip. So those individuals will still have service. We understand though that there are, there are a couple of people in the Wheatsport Jordan area, uh, who uh, who used that service pre-pandemic, and that, that service is not going to be available uh, if these proposed changes go forward uh, at this point. Uh, the, <clears throat> the Moravia Route uh, uh, Route 8 service, uh, this is a commuter service uh, that connects the city of Auburn and the Cayuga Correctional Facility in Moravia. There were two trips that are operated, one in the morning uh, going from Auburn to Moravia, and back in another one that did the same in the afternoon. Again, approximately five to six uh, individuals used the service. Uh, annual ridership counts indicate that probably only three of them rode daily on an average. Again, direct observation uh, showed that many individuals uh, were driving their vehicles to um, a local convenience store and using that as a parking ride location. We only bring that up because 
um, those individuals do have access to vehicles. They are not transit dependent. Um, and uh, uh, at this point, we're looking to discontinue this service again, as it was only carrying on average three riders a day. And there were many days where uh, nobody ride, rode the service uh, at all. That concludes the presentation part of this public hearing. Um, this, this presentation is available on our website at www.centro.org backslash public meeting. Uh, we will continue to uh, welcome questions and comments on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Go Central Bus. People can call and leave a message for us uh, via phone at 315-442-3400. You can speak to one of our customer service representatives. They'll take down your information and uh, your comments. You can write to us at 200 Cortland Avenue, Syracuse, New York, 13205. And we still are accepting faxed comments as well at 315-442-3337. At this point, I will open up the floor to uh, any attendees who wish to uh, offer up any comments. I'm looking at uh, one individual, uh, Yaritza Batista. I don't know if you're willing to or want to make a comment, but you are more than welcome to do so. You do not have to. And that appears to be the lone member of the public that is in attendance at this public hearing. So at this point, it is now 620. We will uh, keep this public hearing open for another 15 minutes to 635. If there are no uh, other members of the public who, uh, will, who are, will join and attend, or offer up any comments, we will close the public hearing at that moment, but I wanna give an extra 15 minutes for any other individuals who may want to join the public hearing.
just like to add the one individual from the general public has left the webinar. And we are down to central individuals and our interpreter at this point.
Okay, uh, as of this point, there are no members of the public who have joined the meeting uh, who are looking to offer comment. Uh, it is now 6.35, and at this point, we are going to officially close the public hearing. I thank everyone for participating, um, and thank you very much. That concludes the thank public Thank you, everyone. Hearing. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Tina.